Hi, I'm The Malt Activist and today we're talking about two things. We're talking about the godfather of Japanese whiskey, Mr. Masataka Takitsuru, and the Yoichi 15, which is one of the whiskeys that he's created. Now, it would be unfair to uh, review any uh, Japanese whiskey without giving a nod of your head to uh, Mr. Takitsuru. So he's basically the, the gentleman that founded Japanese whiskey. He was born in 1894 in uh, Hiroshima to a family that was already in uh, the sake business. They had their own brewery. So I guess it was inevitable that he'd uh, get into alcohol. Uh, then in 1918, he uh, moved to Glasgow, Scotland, where he studied organic chemistry. Uh, after that, when he graduated, he uh, was an apprentice at Longmorn Distillery. Uh, this was followed by uh, James Calder Distillery. And then finally, his last apprenticeship was at the Hazelburn Distillery in Campbelltown. Uh, incidentally, this is where he met his wife uh, as well, and he got married uh, much uh, against the wishes of both the families, but hey, uh, you know, all's fair in love and war. Uh, he then went back to uh, Japan and where he worked at uh, Kotobukiya, uh, which he helped transform into a whiskey distillery, and then that later came to be known as Santori. Uh, Santori is the distillery that produces the Yamazaki range of whiskeys that you must have heard about. And then finally, in 1934, he founded Nika Distillery in Yuechi, which is on the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido. And so that's how whiskey making in Japan started. Even now, there's just two real giants of uh, whiskey making, uh, uh, Santori and Nika, and they're both uh, founded by uh, Masataka Takitsu. So, uh, this was just a little uh, brief background on the godfather of Japanese whiskey without which we would not be paying exorbitant prices at auction for his spirit. So what do I have with me today? I have with me the Yuichi 15. This is a 15 year old single bar made at the Yuichi distillery. Um, there's very, very, very little literature about uh, about how this whiskey is made. Uh, I've done so much research, but for some reason, Japanese are uh, notoriously uh, secretive about all their formulas. So my best guess is this is refill sherry butts uh, or a blend of first and refill to create this. What I think is probably one of my most favorite whiskeys ever. So let's get to it. Nice, it's a nice pale color, which is why I think it's sort of refill sherry butts. It has a lovely earthy nose. There's a, because Yoichi is right next to uh, the sea, uh, most uh, Yoichi whiskeys will carry a very uh, strong brininess and a sea salt uh, character to it. Of course, there's a lot of caramel as well. Burnt sugar, vanilla, citrus. The oak comes out nicely as well. It's quite rich and deep. And you know, I was lucky enough to, to be able to get a couple of bottles when I did. Oops, there it is. <laughs> That's the other one which I haven't opened yet. I had a little bit lying in the last one. So I figured I'd just get rid of it. So, um, I'm just glad I managed to buy them when I did because so they're discontinued and the only way you could get them now is is on auction if you're willing to you know let go of your kidney and I'm not willing to let go of my kidney it's ridiculous nice it's a very nice nose and there is a very very distinct earthiness that I get uh, from most Japanese whiskeys for some reason and it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's earth and dried leaves together. Um, very, very natural, uh, very organic. And for some reason, I find them very, very prominently in Japanese whiskeys. And this is no different. I really like this nose. Now I'm getting some more red fruits in here as well. 
Like it. Mmm. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. <sighs> yeah, so um, really lovely, um, robust mouthfeel. It sort of coats my entire palate. It's it's a little smoky, quite malty. Uh, it is, there's spice, there's some vanilla notes. It's bold, but it's not in your face. So I, I like that restraint as well. Some citrus, marshmallows, uh, and again, right towards the end, that bit of oak. And so wonderfully balanced. I, I like the finish. It's still there uh, uh, on, on my palate, in my chest, uh, quite warming. And just, wow, just really lovely, you know. Uh, it's one of my, it, well, it used to be one of my go-to drinking whiskeys, obviously not anymore, thanks to the ridiculous prices and the fact that it's completely discontinued. But back in the day when, uh, you know, the whiskey world wasn't so absolutely insane, you could get a bottle of this for around $100, $120. Uh, I, I got two of these, three of these, three of these in fact, uh, from the airport, from the duty free, and they were just there. And, People bought them and drank them and it was no big deal. And then suddenly one day the world went crazy. And they said, we must have Japanese whiskeys. And then, and then the Japanese said, well, we don't have any. And then the whole world came crashing down. And now we're sitting here drinking 15 year old Japanese whiskey as if they're, as if they're unicorns and which they are. There's very few 15 year old Japanese whiskeys out there. Hopefully this issue gets resolved in the next five to ten years and you know, we have a steady supply, but yeah till then it's nothing you can do Just Thank you lucky stars that you know, you were able to get hold of a couple of bottles when you did and that's it Yeah So nice and easy to drink absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, like I said was my go-to whiskey uh, back in the day, uh, just because you know it was, it made you feel sophisticated for some reason. It had, and it, the sherry was wonderful, uh, and just the overall balance on the whiskey was really great. And uh, again, like I said, I'm sad that it's not as easily available as I want it to be, but hey, what can I do? So, there you have it a little bit of history on Masataka Takitsuru and one of the whiskeys that he's created. I'm the Malta Activist, until next time. Peace.